Right. Okay, uh, just want to quick testify um, and talk about what happened to me uh, on Friday and stuff. But, um, okay, like what he was saying, I have been um, speaking forth and believing God for a vehicle uh, for quite some time. And I had two prophets of God. I mean, first I said it. First I said it. And then two prophets of God um, spoke it over me since I said it. You know, uh, one was just last the other Sunday. But anyway, um, anything could be further from the truth. I um, went a year and a half without a vehicle. I, um, the last uh, car I had here on Friday, i got to tell you this story, Friday, um, I ruined my Volvo. Um, okay, I uh, ruined the, uh, oh, what you call it? I cracked the engine, you know? Oh, the, the, head, block, the block. block. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, let it you. overheat. Okay, because it was a heater uh, hose that was leaking. I told my husband in the summer, this thing's leaking. And he said, don't let it get overheated. <laughs> so anyway, I let, I let it go overheated. I'm, pour, I'm dumping water in this car on Friday. Picture this, guys, every five miles. Wow. And my daughter and I, are like, she, we're like yelling at each other, don't let it get in the red. And it's steaming and everything, right? I cried unto God. Friday, okay, because we're talking about crying, but I want to explain this. Like David says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and yes. he heard me out of his holy. I wasn't crying in unbelief, right. okay, but I was crying because he's my father, and yeah. I just said, God, I need a vehicle. I just cried to daddy, you know, wow. and I'm telling you that I went, on Saturday I went in, and they're showing me this big loan payment that I can get, you know, and I can have a real nice car, but uh, the whole time I'm thinking, I, matter of fact, I even said, well, what do I do if I win a car, or, you know, if I'm given a car, and he goes, well, I don't know, I guess you can pay it off or whatever, you know, and it just didn't settle right with me, you know, and here, um, then we found uh, a Windstar uh, for only $800 on Craigslist that was only one there for 20 minutes, and we got it, wow. we got it, okay, but I want to tell you that that is a car, and I even say this, and that's to tie me over until I get the brand new car. Amen. 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 It's atmospheric. Oh, back up. Mm -hmm. It's atmospheric. It, mm -hmm. it's, yeah. And, and I, I'm so thankful to be here tonight because, you know, <laughs> I needed to hear this. Mm -hmm. I don't even need this, but I, I'm just saying I'm so thankful to be here tonight, especially for what has gone on my whole life. Mm -hmm. My hair was down to here last year. And the doctor said, you're going to go through radiation and chemo because your cancer is not only in your cervix, and it's huge, it's been there for eight years, but it's also in the lymph nodes next to your spinal cord. And if we try and operate, we're going to paralyze you. So then they, had, they did this, then they're like, we're going to do radiation and chemo. And I'm going, my hair, I know what the Bible says about a woman's hair. I know exactly what it says about it. It's your covering. It's a glory veil. I'm like, I have been growing my hair out all this time. And they started giving me contrast to get me ready for the chemo and radiation. And it made me so sick. And then vertigo jumped on me. And I was bedridden for six weeks. I couldn't even take care of my hair that was down to here. So I prayed to God. I'm like, whatever you tell me to do about this hair, where I go to church, the ladies have hair down in here. And, you know, God spoke to me and said, go ahead and cut your hair. Mm -hmm. Because you can't take care of it down to here. It's all knotted and each little strand of hair tie itself into like a knot. And I couldn't even brush my own hair. And it hurt. And I was in pain. And I had vertigo. And my husband wouldn't brush my hair. You know what I mean? He didn't have time nor the mm -hmm. patience. Mm -hmm. He needs... He, anyway, so I pray to God, I'm like, I know I'm not supposed to cut my hair, and, but I want to know what you want me to do about this hair, mm -hmm. because I want to do whatever your will is about this hair. So mm -hmm. if you choose to have me cut it, let me know to cut it. If you want me to leave it where it is and it all falls out, I'll accept it. I'll shave my head, whatever your will is about this hair. So I was spoken to. And I was told, go cut your hair. Mm -hmm. Go cut it to about right here and just put it in a ponytail and go get it cut. So I put my hair in a ponytail. I still have that ponytail. It's one long ringlet. 
and it's beautiful to me. So it's in a Ziploc bag, and I have it. And I'm saving that. And I mean, it's it's coming back. But when I went, let me let me finish this, please, brother. Anyway, so then I start the radiation and chemo, and I'm sitting next to these ladies in chemo, and I'm like. They're, they're bald. Their hair is falling out. And I'm like, what happened to your head when your hair started falling out in these patches? They said it would be on fire. Like literally a physical, you could feel it burning. The hair follicles themselves were on fire. Your scalp would be on fire. Wow. And then that whole patch of hair that was on fire would fall out. Mm. And I'm like, okay. And I'm praying about this hair. I'm like, whatever your will is. And I'm a doubting Thomas. I've been a doubting Thomas, Sister Humphrey. I have been. I'm not going to lie. But I was like, okay. So I'm sitting there listening to these ladies tell me about these experiences with their hair falling out. And I'd be having burns. Like, I'd be burning all night long through the whole 33 weeks. Every night, all night, burning, burning, burning. Hair burning. Backside burning. Patches. But my hair did not fall out like that. It fell out evenly. I didn't have any patches come out of my head. I'd have the burns, the actual marks. Because the radiation is like, to me, it's like lightning. It goes in, it's got to come out somewhere. And, but it didn't fall out like that. How many of you that with God? That was, yes. I want to say something else. This is off the subject a little bit. Mm. I did a lot of preacher teaching on the hair, the long hair, and this and that. Hair for the color. Mm. I'm not going to get off the message here, but I have to bring it in while, while we have the earth here. Uh, the brethren, they, they, in Amish and Mennonites, they have their people wear uh, coverings and wands mm -hmm. and that. The brethren, they, they have this wee little white uh, little thing they put on top here and they pan on top of the mm -hmm. head. brother said to me one time, he said, uh, we disagree with your teachings, he says, because your women does not cover their head. I said, does yours? He said, yes. I said, now I'm an old farm boy. Now listen to this here. I said, now we had haystacks out in the middle of our barnyard. How I many of you know that's where the, the pile of hay was? And I said, they'd be 50, 60 feet across. And if I said to one of my brothers or somebody, to go cover that haystack, <coughs> and he went out there and put a five foot tarp in the middle of the haystack, did that cover the haystack? <laughs> he said, no. I said, then you cannot say your women's head are covered. I said, if you want to cover it, do like the, the Amish and different ones in Quakers were, where they cover it down to their neck. Now listen, the Bible says your hair is gay for a cover. You don't have to have it dragging on the floor. Right. right. Somebody say amen. Right. Now the Bible just talks about the long hair. It's, it's for the glory and this and that. So, so I, if I was a woman, my hair would never be cut. But one thing for sure, I wouldn't be so concerned how long my hair was as long as my hair covered my head. So I say, man. Amen. Right. So take time out to research and study the Word of God and see what it says. So if I told somebody to cover up my feet, and my wife came in and that they only covered my feet, she covered up my whole body, my whole head, mm -hmm. I'd have to say, whoa! <laughs> you went to extremes. I asked you to cover up my feet. Well, if I say, would you cover up my head, does that mean she's going to cover up my whole body clean down to my feet? Right. So Take time out to get before God. Ask him questions. Now, he blessed you because he was concerned about your hair. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. And how many of you know, for all things work together for our good because Amen. we love God and we call according to purpose. So we, we, what we do, we relax and let him do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. yes. If he decided, you know, uh, all that's coming out, well, guess what? Say, well, thank you, Lord. Oh, we'll go out, but when the next batch that comes back in is going to be more beautiful than ever. So I say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Well, doesn't the Bible say something like one will be led to do this and one will be led to do that? Don't let none be twixt between me and they. Yes. Right. Because I, mean, I believe if somebody's told to let their hair grow, they better let it grow. But I also know that yes. then don't be bratty with somebody else that That's not letting their hair grow. Because a woman told me, and I was a babe in the Lord, and I thought, boy, she is really wanting corrected of the Lord. <laughs> she had her hair wrapped up in the air, and I did too at one time, mm -hmm. up on her head. And she comes up to me, a babe in the Lord, <clears throat> and she said, do you know you're going to hell for cutting your hair? Uh. 
Let's He's get, not let's, God. Let's get back. Let's get back to the, the oh, subject. Here. Dude, okay. Definitely. We want to stick with the subject. Yes, I definitely want to stick, stick with the subject. Stick with the subject. The subject, is, subject is this here: blessing and cursing. Yes, indeed. You've got to watch what we say. You can turn somebody off by what you say. Yeah. And so you've got to be off, off curve. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, see that where God is not going to have me to be someone who has to be longevity with words. I can't hear you. He isn't, he's not going to have me to be someone who is longevity with words. He, he said, I raised my children in the church, so I was very strict and denominational there with do not do this and don't do that. He simply says to me, to God be the glory, he takes care of a whole lot of spirits that are going to find a kind of a piggyback into a place called pseudo-Christianity and he doesn't play with the body of Christ about witchcraft because he, after a while things get the glory, whether it be clothing, to the pastor be the glory, and then we get into idol worship. To God be the glory sets the record straight there because he is not going to give us the Holy Spirit and we're going to do what we want to do with anything from our head to our toes because every one of our hair is numbered by God. Amen. Uh, I'm going to get back to the message. I want to say one thing here. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches goes over overboard with uh, ordinances and, and so forth like that. But you got to have order in the church. So they say that. So if you don't have order, you're going to have confusion. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have order in our church too. Yes. You no, know, our church does church. So if somebody comes in and they want to come up from front and they look like a Jezebel and this and that and smoke a cigarette and this and that and uh, so they're not taking a position That's right. That's because right. we're a, a letter, a epistle, read of all men. So a certain guy used to come there, he's always at the ballroom singing karaoke and this and that. He wanted to be up front. I said, I'm giving you a three months period. If you do not come out of it, stop your smoking, and you step down. Yeah. How many of you know if you go into a congregation and the pastor accepts it. Oh, you put Jesus. your hand to it and say, I accept that. Wow. Mm -hmm. so, so, right. That's right. So, so this is where I draw a line. That's so, right. Say amen. That's yeah. right. Amen. I'm not going to come against Brother Michael, but uh, Brother Michael is a true man of God. He brought a <clears> brother <throat> fellow in there back probably a year ago and so forth like that. And we're all supposed to try to bring people in to get closer to God. And so that my mind, God used him to bring this, this young man in. A young man came up to me and wanted to testify. I had just met him. I told him no. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I, I had a check in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And I knew this young man was not living right, and I also knew that he was going to get up there and say some things that was not scriptural. Mm -hmm. How many of you have to have order? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So amen. So you've got to be careful. Yep. So say amen. Amen. So how many of you know, speaking and talking by talking here, somebody speaks one negative thing, just like that one guy came in here, our Bible study here just a couple weeks ago. We had a couple of them. Once saved, always saved. Mm -hmm. Come on. And somebody that doesn't really know is running over. All he did was send a spirit of what? Confusion. Confusion. Because of what he spoke. So I say amen. So I have to shut him down. Somebody say amen. Amen. You have to block that kind of stuff. Whoa. Yes. Enough's enough. So we say amen. 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 So you've got to, you've got to be careful. Go, go ahead. Where are we at? Who's reading next? Oh, that's the same scripture. Very, very much on time. Let no corrupt communications proceed forth out of your mouth, but that which is good, that it may be edifying. Okay, let me get it right now. But that which is good for the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. Sister Gina, tell us what that means. No corrupt communication proceeds. Come out of your mouth. Talk. Swearing and slander, gossip and cursing and. Yeah. You know, that, that. Yeah. Negative Justin. talk. Yeah. Negative talk. Yeah. How many of you know a lot of people say they're Christians has a dirty mouth? Yeah. yeah. Now, mm -hmm. Isaiah 6, mm -hmm. one more time. Let's, let's see what Isaiah 6 says. He said, in the year that King Uriah died, he's talking about him, he said, I saw the Lord, I lifted up, setting up on a throne. And he said, and above it stood the seraphim, each one had, and each one had six wings. The twain they covered their face, the twain they covered their feet, the twain they did fly. And each one cried unto another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. And at the sound of their voice, the 
doors, the pillars shook. And he said, the smoke filled the house. He said, then said I, woe is me, because I what? Well, in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Yeah. For my eyes have seen the Lord. Okay, woe, the worst curse is. What's he said? I've been living with a lot of people with filthy communication. Mm. Does that necessarily mean they were cursing? Not necessarily. How many know disbelief? Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're telling me that you're believing that God's going to totally heal you and give you a miracle? Right. Don't, don't you know that's just wishful thinking? Mm -hmm. When you get around that kind of stuff, oh, when people say they're Christians, how many know the devil has influence in the church? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. You had Thomas right. there. Well, I doubt it. I doubt it. Huh. I doubt it. You're never going to get ahead in life. Mm -hmm. That's right. After all these years, don't you realize you're never going to get ahead? And after a while, that stuff starts to mm -hmm. take root in you. Yes, yes that's it right. It take a root, and it'll start to grow. Mm -hmm. And then it'll start to get to you. Mm -hmm. But you yeah. have to break that curse. Amen. Like, I will not receive that kind of stuff. That's right. So say amen. Wow. Amen. 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 But when the doctor stands for you in front and says, but you got to come to the truth of reality, here is the picture. This is a fact. I don't care what you show me. I'm telling you, it's going. That's right. And as far as I'm concerned, it's gone. Right. And I'm made right. whole and I'm better in shape now. Right. And it's going to be then than ever before. God's going to renew my strength. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. I shall believe the report Lord of the Lord. Lord. Amen. 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 And then, then, then the Bible says, and to whom is the only Lord revealed? <clears throat> Uh -huh. To them, a strong Lord. Yeah. So when you start to get strong, mm. He stretches His arm out to you. Mm. Hallelujah. So yeah. 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 But you've got to stand your ground. Uh -huh. I, I've been reading Amen. Daniel, and, and uh, they told told Daniel that when he built the big image and so forth, if you do not bow, to, it's, it's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, not Daniel. And if you do not bow, we're going to cast you in the fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. And they stood their ground and said, King, we don't care what you say. We will not bow to your image. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they say these words. And God will deliver us. But then they turn and say, But if he don't, mm -hmm. we're still not going. That's so right. either way, we're That's still right. standing for God. Amen. And because they stood their way, when they tried to throw them in, the men that yeah. threw them in, they got burned up. And then the king said, Did we not just throw three and we see four? Yeah. Hallelujah. Looks like the Son of God. Wow. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you stand your ground, you might go through the fiery furnace. Yeah. But he's going to jump in there with you. Somebody say amen. Yes. Yes. Somebody say amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. This is why you have to get around people for That's right. faith. That's right. If one can put a thousand of light, yeah. and two ten thousand, you have a church or a church. Yeah. One put a thousand light, two can put ten thousand. Mm -hmm. What can a group like this do? That's it. Yeah, that's right. Right. If you want to hang around all kinds mm -hmm. of long belief, go for it, baby. Mm -hmm. But I've had enough of the stinking devil, and I'm tired that's of that. That's right. If you want to talk devil, so go someplace else. Glory. Wow. Amen. Something, Amen. Something you want to Hallelujah. Say? Yeah, I was just sniffing to see if he smelled like smoke. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lights on fire. <laughs> But that was an instructing spirit. I'm sorry. How many of you, listen to me here. It went right with what you was saying. I know. Listen to me. Now, please pay attention while I'm trying. I'm not beating it. Yeah, I am beating it too. Speak. Stop being an instructing spirit. Can't you touch him? I didn't know. I was breathing. But what you was doing, I you know what me, you two over here. Brother Barker did hear another thing I said because you was whispering in his ear. How many of you I know? didn't say anything. Well, sniffing at it. Okay, so what, what I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to bring you into a place yeah. yes. where we're all in order. How many of God's not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. That's right. So yeah. if, if we're not all one mind accord, mm -hmm. Holy Ghost will come. Mm -hmm. You have to be one mind, one court. Yes. It's not being mean, but always remember, you've got to show respect to somebody. So if yeah. Sister Stephanie's talking and so forth, and I think over here and I'm still talking to Brother Michael, Brother Michael and Jerry and talk to him. It's rude. How many of you know it's, it's not only rude, but it's also disrespectful saying, I'm not really interested in what you're saying. I'm just having my own little party. Right. So I'm not well, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. I, know, I, know wasn't, I wasn't talking. I mean, it was and tight. And was, was, was the same thing as saying amen. It was agreement know, with you. But, but remember, it's still a distracting mm -hmm. spirit. How, how many of you know 
I'll tell you a story real quick. We had a man, you were probably there when it happened. Very, very good man. He was one of my elders before you came. He was over in a big room and all kinds of people were there and so forth. And he was praying for people. And when he was praying for them, he was screaming to the top of his lungs. Screaming. Mm -hmm. Speaking in tongues. I mean, really, really loud. Mm -hmm. People were lying in line coming up for prayer and so forth. And he's screaming and praying so forth. And he's praying, but he's a distracting spirit because everybody was looking over there. Mm -hmm. And I had to go over and tell him, hold it down. You don't need to pray anymore. I mean, the spirit is unsubjective. We can yeah. pray silently, or we can yes. scream our heads off. Mm -hmm. yes. Come on. So, so we have to keep everything in order. And I've seen so many times people come into service, this and that, and they'll start to dance and shout and so forth, and I'm, they're not in the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. They're in a destructive spirit, and I have to stop them right where they are. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that. Mm -hmm. But Satan is so slick. We was in church service one time. Power God was so strong. So strong. And man, woman walks in the door. As soon as it's a fellow in the pool, I feel evil going in the door. I danced up to the pastor, and he looked back at me with her eyeballs hit head on, you know, and he looked back at me. And the man and woman come in, and all of a sudden they prophesied, mm. and she interpreted. Thus saith the Lord, we're all supposed to go outside the church and do a Jericho march seven times. I go, you foul lying devil. And I got like this here, and brother, I said, Everybody, don't move. Don't move. There's some devils in this church. And I'm going to count to three, and at the end of three, I'm going to cast out devils. Wow. And you start to count, they run like the spirit. How many of you know the mm. devil mm. will do everything to get you out mm. of the spirit? Mm. Uh -huh. How many of you ever been witnessing to somebody or something yeah. like that? And all of a sudden, some kind of distraction, the little kid comes, starts to cry, telephone mm. rings, the mm. dog barks. Something happens, it's a distracting spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, I'm saying that. Mm -hmm. so if, if you're going to be used in the spirit of God, you've got to be careful about these other spirits operating around yes. you. How many of you know this room right now, that the angels have got it, but there's also spirits trying to sneak in here from hell? Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. Yeah. 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 So, so you can be sitting in church and, and loving God, and an evil spirit will start whispering in your ear, distract mm -hmm. you, get you off. Good, it's just a uh, here. You're next to read or write. Actually, I am being tormented right now by the spirit of clairvoyance and which branch is not funny. He said that that's why the Holy Spirit doesn't lead me to be loud or boisterous, but he just leads me to pray softly, and I do believe he does get results. But I'm not trying to be a distraction. But I'm in spiritual warfare right now. I'm homeless, and the devil has been quite busy with me and my family, and witches don't like me. Whatever the Holy Ghost does in my life, which does not like me, and I'm constantly dealing with the spirit of witchcraft and everyone is trying to challenge me, especially when we crack the word of God open and go into the type of ministry that's being opened up right here in a place called the power of the time and when. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Who's next? You got something? Yeah. Please pass the microphone, please. Thank you. Or just forget your papers, and we're just going to pass this paper around. Each person will take three of those scriptures. Okay, Proverbs 16, 24 says, Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. What's that mean, somebody? Go to Mark and tell Hearing pleasant words are... Means hearing uh, pleasant words are sweet. So yeah. when uh, no, yeah. no, we said yes. Yes, we said yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, <that's all laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, when you speak you got pleasant words to someone, you're buzzing them. Amen. Now mm -hmm. let's do a little follow. I'm gonna shock you a little bit. Sorry. In the last days, the people should be themselves preachers to. Do what? Yeah. Speak pleasant words. Yeah. Now, the pleasant words that, that come from God is great. When God speaks to you, the pleasant word, you're healed, you're set free, mm -hmm. you're delivered, Amen. you're blessed. That's wonderful when it comes from God. I want God's word. I don't want some rinky dink preacher getting up here telling me you can't lose your salvation, uh, you're okay the way you are, and, all right. this, and make everything pleasant and end up going to hell. So we've got to be careful where these pleasant words come from. Mm -hmm. 
did the devil did or did he not speak pleasant words to Adam and Eve when he said, the devil's home said, if you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. And the devil spoke pleasant words and said, you're not going to die. Right. You're going to be just like God. Right. Well, that was pleasant to hear, but it was a lie, devil, and it was death at the door. So we got to try the word, rather than be of God. Try the spirit. So <coughs> amen. amen. A lot of people run around to so-called prophets all the time, and they want to go to a so-called prophet who say, "Thus saith the Lord." I was just in a church uh, fr Friday, <gasps> and woman gave woman hardly ever goes to church. I've been on for years, and she just happened to be there in church. And they asked me if I could come up and pray for them. And this woman gets up and she speaks a message in tongues and another woman uh, interprets it. And the, the word to the whole church was, I am well pleased with thee. And I knew the church. And I know that God's not well pleased with any of us. So we say, man, God's not well pleased with us. Amen. We've got a long ways to go. And I had to address this situation. And how many know that didn't go over bad? Big, Somebody say amen? amen. I said, God's not well pleased. Right. And there was, I was saying to that individual, you were just speaking pleasant words that wasn't God. Somebody say amen. 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 So, you know, you don't win votes like that. But you have to tell it. Okay. I'm just going to add, I was just going to add, uh, you were talking about Adam and Eve and how the enemy deceived them. Um, actually, and about, we need to obey the commandments you know, in our salvation and everything. Uh, actually, it's uh, the first commandment that God gave, I believe. It's in Genesis 2, verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely, and, you know, so and so. But I, I think it might have been the first commandment. <laughs> I mean, even Adam and Eve that were, were, were created perfect, God still gave them a commandment. How many of you know, not everything God tells us to do causes us to jump up and down? Right. Mm -hmm. You're living with somebody, you're living in adultery, I'm a, I'm a Christian, mm -hmm. God says separate. <coughs> so that, that doesn't sound good, so say mm -hmm. amen. Mm -hmm. God, amen. God tells you to do something or this or that that don't really suit your fancy. That don't sound good. Right. And his word would cut us. Like a sharp, sword, two-edged yeah. sword, cuts the body of the bones, the marrow, everything. It, it cuts us. So I say, man. Yes. Mm -hmm. And when he cusses us, he expects us to do something about it. Yeah. You ever hear somebody say, "Well, if God don't want me in this situation. Uh, he'll do something about it." Uh, <laughs> my Bible says, "Lay aside every sin, or wait to easily beset you." I beseech you, beautiful brother, by the virtue of God, you present your bodies. A living sacrifice, holy and something. Like that. So we've got to do our part. Yeah. If we're living in sin, get out of sin. Yes. Right. So I say, amen. 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 Well, I'm looking for somebody to help me. I, I want God to do it. I'm not helping you, and God's not going to help you until you do your part. So I say, amen. 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 Yes. Yes. So somebody say, amen. Put on amen. the whole armor of God that you may be standing against the walls of death. Yes. Next one, she's about to next one. She did. You have two more. Okay. I have two more. Thank you. All right. Glasses down here. All right. Colossians three eight says, "But now ye also puff off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth." Put off. Put off. I'm sorry. That's what I, I can't. You I'm sorry. I have to. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm not used to doing this. All, I'm not used to doing this all the time. I just got these things, and I'm not. I'm sorry. My eyes are getting really crazy. I'm sorry. Read the next one. Okay. Let me let me put these things back down proper. Okay. Matthew 12:37. Before you go any further. Did you take notice that it said, put off all put those off. things? Put off. Yeah. Now, now, wait a minute. We're waiting for God to take them away from us. We mm have -mm. yeah. yeah. to put it off. Mm -hmm. yeah. All these things. We've got to, sometimes things that's in our life that we were carrying around, we should put it off. They decide they're a sinner, wait till you can say, stop it. Mm -hmm. Stop it. Somebody say, stop it. Stop, stop it. it. See, we, we are always wanting God to do it. 
You know, when we were babies, <laughs> coming baby, he would take care of us because we couldn't do it. But when we become a man, we put off these childish things. Yes. We do our part, so I, I can't stand it, right? People come in. <laughs> True. Shut up. Hmm. Shut that stick and ball it up. Do your part. L listen to me. If we do what we can do, God will do what we can do. Yes, Amen. God Amen. raised Lazarus because they cannot raise Lazarus. Because he said, do what? Take the great clothes off him and feed him. Well, God could have brought him out of the grave there, you know, when had the grave goes on. And he could have shut a big table right there at the mouth of the, the tomb. But he did. Mm -hmm. You can't raise him th those days, but I, I'll do what you can. So say amen. 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 So, so, you know, all this stuff, well, I don't know why God didn't do nothing for me. Well, probably because you ain't doing your part. So mm -hmm. say amen. 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 And the verse says, I put off anger and malice. Um, I've learned that uh, when it comes to anger and malice, you can't just stop being angry. You know, uh, chances are you have wounds, you know, that uh, need to be dealt with. Uh, God, I mean, if you ask God to uh, show you uh, what these wounds are, you know, He will. You know, but it's up to you to forgive the people who have wounded you. And, uh, That's right. And, and it also, and, and even before that, you have to be willing to admit that, um, you know, uh, I have issues. I have to find out what they are. I just can't just say, well, that's just how it is. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, now, I, I may you know, I mean, you know, you've all got hurt and this and that through the years. And when something comes back to your mind, your wound or whatever like this, you know what you do when that comes back to your mind? Yeah. Stop entertaining it. Take it captive, right? Take it captive. Refuse to think on that thing. Mm -hmm. Speak in tongues, smother yourself with gospel music, lay hands on your head, yes. post scripture, wow. do something, but stop dwelling on it. Stop thinking on it. Because the longer you think on it, the more anger you'll get, the more hurt you'll get, and then you end up like Elijah, I'm the only yeah. one. Oh, me. Oh, me. And mm. so now the whole world yep. rolls around you. Now you become selfish because it's all about self. So I say, man, mm. me, 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 me. You don't know what I go through. Oh, oh. oh shut up. You don't know what the rest of us go through. So I say, man. Amen. Amen. So stop, stop sucking your thumb here too. If we had we had a thumb sucking contest right here, like I don't think we would have an arm left. I probably win that one right now. So, I'll bet you I could I suck you real quick. Let me say that. But how many of you know we, we can all go through a pity party? Yeah. That's right. Right. Pity me. Pity me. Right. Pity me. Pity me. Pity me. Pity me. Oh, shut up! My God, shut up! That's what I'm saying. I do. Yeah. I just I I was telling Sister Humphrey that my little guy is now in Erie and I just spent like a month, Sister Joan knows, I, I, I sat for a month mourning and pining and crying and just being sad and beside myself and my husband would come home and you know his heart's a little hard and he, what do you want me to do for you? You, yeah. you did it and it's like you know it's your fault and then God spoke to me and said this man is really angry that this is what has happened but I already knew he was angry with me, but then he's taking it out on me, so I'm like getting really kicked, and, you know, kicked down, and it's like, okay, me sitting here crying is doing no good. Right. I have to get up and do the work, and right. God, yes, he's going to deal with everything. I believe that he is going to, he's right. going to right all wrongs, the, the, the way that my husband's been treating me, he's... He's going to learn that that's not the way. But I have to be in control of my own emotions, mm -hmm. and I cannot catch a wrench. If he throws it at me, I have to let it fall to the ground. Right. And I can't sit around feeling sorry for myself. Mm -hmm. I have to be strong. I have to be of right. good courage. Amen. And I have to believe that God is in control, yes. and he will right all wrongs. And I have to be about his business and not be sitting around sucking my thumb, crying like a little baby, get off the milk, get to the meat, get to the bone and the marrow if I have to. And I mean, mm. so I am guilty of being a little thumb sucker. That's why I said I could probably beat you right now because 
Yeah. Quit being a crybaby. Is that all? Do you want me to read it? Yes, go ahead. Well, I agreed with her. But the Bible does say that when I converted, I was converted, I said, Lord, in a way, I'm glad you said that. Be angry and sin not. Because you are going to be hurt and you are going to get angry where your husband's mistreating you. But we, uh, we have to just take a hold of it, like you said. Yes. But you are going to get angry. Anybody yes. in this room that says they do not get angry, yeah. you are a liar and the truth is not in you. That's right. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ and get thee behind me, Satan, in no okay, weapon form. Let me say this mm -hmm. here. Be angry, mm -hmm. don't stay angry. Amen. Right. In other words, it upsets you at the spur of the moment, and you, you, you want to fly right. off the handle, you want oh, to throw a dish through the wall, yeah. or <laughs> right. whatever. but you don't stay angry. Yeah. What you do yeah. is this. Yeah. Get your mind off of it real quick, mm -hmm. and I don't know how many times when I sing to happen, God would tell me to sing. I, I, I yes. don't sing this Hallelujah. song, and God wanted me to sing. I, I'd say, I don't feel like singing. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many, so the Bible says, mm -hmm. you know, uh, lift up those people's hands. Make a yes. talk to so, so you know, Praise you know, God. Hands are dying. You yes. don't feel like it, but you raise your hands. You say, Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, Lord, I, 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 I'm just so anyway. upset. Lord, I'll tell you what. I, I, I just want to love you, Lord. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I, that's I great. To Thank you, Lord. And, and after a while, you know, you forget it. Yes. And then you've got to recognize that your husband or whatever the situation yes. is, whatever it is, Praise it's God. not him. That's it's right. the devil it's trying to move devil. through him to work you up. Yes. Yep. So you got to recognize where it's coming from. That's but you right. got to, with Sister Jones, listen, you got to watch that words of life or death. Mm -hmm. She just turned around and said, Well, you rotten jerk. If you only knew what I'm shoving through, and you, and you bring me on to your duty. Right. What you do is say, Honey, I'm sorry. For, forgive me. Yes. You didn't do anything. Yeah. But, but how many know? That's what my wife did to me years ago. Uh -huh. And I'm telling you what, when she done that, she cut my heart to pieces. When she came up, she said, I'm sorry. She didn't do nothing. Praise God. I mean, she, uh -huh. she, I went to get, get drunk, and I can't get drunk because all the thing is what she said, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, I had to come home. And she sat in there crying. So, somebody say amen. 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 I, have, I just have two. Oh, oh. wait. You know, go ahead. I just want to finish up with two scriptures. If we're going to have to shut down, I have two left that I just want to say. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. This is First Peter one fifteen. But oh no no no. Oh. As <laughs> Gina, you're doing this on purpose. Fine. Do it. Okay. But but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Isn't that powerful? Yes. Be ye holy. Oh, how, how many of you know God. you can be holy because he said you can be because yes. he said be ye. Yes. Oh, oh, be ye holy. Be ye holy. So if you're not holy, That's you great. can be. I get and how, how you do it, Think with me now. How do you do it? You put off all these jumping Yep, jokes. that's right. right. You, now you do what you, what would Jesus do? W W G D. J D. What would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. so how would Jesus react on it? Punch him in the mouth? No. no. Yeah. What yeah. Like what the the mind. Mind. <laughs> you know, now I'd like to know what each person thinks this verse means. A little tricky. Matthew five uh, fifteen eleven. Not that which goeth into the mouth defiles a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth. This defiles a man. That's tricky. I always had a little trouble with that. I don't know why. I probably shouldn't. I know. I should. Whatever goes. Your words. Like the death and the power of It's not that what goes in. What's that mean? Well, back in the Old Testament days, Right. Yeah, right. It's, not, it's not what you eat. Right. Exactly. Right. What, what, what you say. Right. Listen, what he's talking about is dung, poo-poo. Huh. Okay. He, he said you, you can eat things because if you read the rest of it, it talks about the dung. Okay. So you, you go out here, it doesn't matter if you eat a grape or if you eat chocolate or whatever. It's all going to come out as dung. 
Right. How many go to the bathroom? We're just all clean up. We all stink, okay? Mm. That don't Not defile me. you. But it's what comes out of your mouth to defile you. Right. Well, I, I can't go eat eggs because, well, I, I'll be I'll be set for it because I'll stink to high heaven. <laughs> That's not what defiles you. It's not what goes into the belly that defiles you. Because yep. that comes out of the dross, the poo. Right. He says, but it's what comes out of the mouth. Yes. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. He's talking plain. Yep. Right. I, I, you know, I, I'm pretty glad the time to come out and can talk to adults. He said, man, what do you think? He pisses on the wall. That's from oh. the Bible. Mm. Right. Mm. He pisses on the wall. Mm. Oh, I can't believe God wrote that in the Bible. He pisses on the roll. Somebody say that. But, but, but you know, if, if you're mature, everything's holy to you. But if you're a kid, oh, I can't believe that. The uh, minister says he's too, what's that word? Tooth? Tooth. Uncouth. 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 Until I say things, well, grew up. Somebody say, look, somebody look at somebody and say, grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. Yeah, I know. Sister Joan, you got anything else to say for closing prayer? No, you um, I definitely did have one comment to say. Thank you for what I meant to say. Since I, 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 I kind of got grafted in here. Um, first John uh, sums it up when it says, He that hates his brother is a murderer, and no murderer has eternal life. What proceeds forth out of the heart is the following scriptures. It says blasphemies. It says um, malice. It says hatred. It says variance. It says all the things uh, that Satan would use humanity to be destroying one another and the bridge back to where mercy would be leading us to life eternal. So see, when life and death proceeds forth out of this home, after a while people know who a murderer would be. Because where Christianity is, murder would begin and it just would find its way back to that avenue again. And there's where God is saying life and death proceed is forth out of the tongue because if we overeat and are full of gluttony and God convicts us and we keep overeating, we're destroying ourselves with the truth what we told, mm -hmm. you see. But there's a spiritual heart condition that flows out of the mouth and it's abominable to God. He said, he that hateth his brother is a murderer and has no eternal life providing in him mm -hmm. through the power of the words that be coming out of the mouth through hatred, malice, envy, and all the things that destroys humanity in the place called piety and poverty. Mm. Mm. Always remember one thing in Brother Michael Cozen in prayer. <clears throat> Never get your eyes on man for your need. That's the trouble with the American. <coughs> You've got our eyes on the government for everything. Right. For housing, for 